A young adventurer named Milo Thatch joins an intrepid group of explorers to find mysterious lost continent of Atlantis. Hi, my name is Andre. I'm Michelle. I'm Emily. And I'm Luis. And we're the Walt Vault Podcast, our podcast about Disney movies. Welcome to the Walt Vault, episode 7. We're here today to talk about the movie Atlantis, The Lost Empire from 2001. Uh, how are you guys doing? You guys doing good? We're doing great. Doing Eating good? some pizza. Doing okay. Uh, we may or may not be joined by a very tiny guest today as uh, the podcast baby herself, Addie, is is around and nearby and snoozing peacefully for now. But she's uh, Right now she's snoozing Susan, mm-hmm. but she definitely could be... Screaming Meeman. <laughs> oh, Meeman. <laughs> she could be ready. <laughs> Shout out to Carol Benef- Benefield for being the best podcast babysitter there ever was. <laughs> she she takes that title very seriously, even though, you know, she's like grandma too. Grandma too. Yeah. yeah. She's also but she's mainly the podcast babysitter. Mainly 90% of her life. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> the 90% of her whole life. <laughs> yes, we're joined by a, a little Addie Kins guest. So if you hear a little... It's her. She's so cute. It's yeah. not Louie. It's Addie. <laughs> 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 he could be doing that, too. I'm usually a crybaby. I do not make noises like that. That's usually your job, Michelle. So That's true. That's Honestly. Yeah. I mean, yours and <laughs> Adam's <laughs> together. <so. laughs> Again, for the record, <laughs> not me. Louise. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> not Louise. So, <laughs> I like how he had to say his name. <laughs> not Louise. Oh my God. Atlantis, the Lost Empire. We told you guys on the last episode... If you haven't seen it, watch it. Listen to this episode because you might be surprised. And I'm going to be real. First impressions. We started watching it, and I was like, ooh, maybe maybe this was a bad idea. But then when the movie ended, I was like, this was a great idea. Like, I really enjoyed it. So my first impressions on this movie, I have a fun fact that kind of sums it up. The movie was planned out as like an action-adventure movie, which it totally is. So the production crew of the movie, they wore T-shirts to work every day that read Atlantis, Fewer songs, more explosions. Oh. Boom. Which basically sums it up a little <laughs> bit. I thought that was hilarious. Less songs, more boom There's boom. There's a lot of boom boom in this. Yeah, so I think this, this movie definitely appeals to the moviegoers that are like, I want an action-packed movie, but not necessarily a musical Disney movie. I don't want right. people singing about sweeping. <laughs> yeah, maybe they didn't. Maybe they didn't want any songs, and I think this movie delivered that. Yeah, there's definitely no songs. This is not a musical at all. Even it though the soundtrack itself is pretty bomb, it has good. a very good score. It won two awards for its soundtrack. Oh, did it? I didn't. Not see that. like any famous awards <laughs> per se, but <laughs> you know, like someone said, hey, it won two hey, awards. Award. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the Atlantis, the Lost oh. Empire Awards. <laughs> <laughs> we won Best Music, yay! <laughs> good um. for us. <laughs> so, what are your first impressions, Andre? Um, so I think I had. I don't know how many times I've seen this movie, but not not very many. And probably the last time I saw it was quite some time ago. But uh, I remember liking it, like vaguely liking it. But uh, watching it this time was was fantastic. It was it was it was it was very fun. It was like I I was thinking that watching it again that I was gonna not like it as much as I had previously because the last time I saw it I must have been a kid. Uh, yeah, same. I was a kid. But uh, it had like a lot of jokes in it. A lot more jokes than I than I expected, and, and the they story were pretty adulty. Yeah, not not in a like racy kind of way, but just I don't think kids would have gotten the context right. of it. Well, in else. fact, I think they said that this was the second animated movie that had a PG rating and not a G rating. Oh, you know, PG. for all those funny one liners in there, yeah. well, a little bit more adulty. Yeah. So uh, first impressions, good. Yeah, it was a good, mm. solid movie. Mm-hmm. I was surprised. This literally was my first impression because I don't think I ever saw this movie. I honestly think I said this to Andre and Michelle when we were watching it. I'm pretty sure that we went to like the movies on a school field trip and we were watching the movie and literally two seconds in, three seconds in, the something happened to the reel of the movie and oh. we literally left the movies. Like we That's didn't so go to sad. any other movie, Jeez. we just left. Andre's worst nightmare. He's a he's an <laughs> avid oh, moviegoer. I'd be like, okay, so where's my free ticket to the next screening? I'll be yeah. going to As that a second place. grader or whatever I was, I didn't think about it, <laughs> but I should have. You didn't do that? Right? You didn't go but talk to a manager? What a cool field trip though. <laughs> but yeah, no. Yeah, go Virginia Park. So yeah. I'm, I'm <laughs> ooh, ooh. 
<laughs> Same thing. <laughs> um, but first impressions, like Michelle said, a couple minutes in, I was a little worried. Um, but yeah, like the first ten minutes, I was kind of like, "What's going on here?" Yeah, mm-hmm. but then once once it got going, it it needed that backstory from the beginning, first couple yeah. minutes, yeah, and then sure. it got it, it really it really picked up steam, literally. <laughs> and then it it was I I really enjoyed it. What about you, Louise? Uh, I really like this movie a lot. I had thought I'd seen it before in the past, but unfortunately, I did not see it. Um, I don't know where I thought I did. Maybe, you know, similar to you guys, it was just playing on TV and then I got either distracted and just stopped mm-hmm. watching it or something. Mm-hmm. But uh, first impressions, I got three words for you guys. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Three words. Three words. Right? Not top five. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> However, um, it is. I really, really enjoyed it. It just wasn't, you know, um, top five material. So right. Technically, I only have one more spot for that, and mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure we're going to do... Um, a plethora more of episodes, so I kind of have to save that one. You got Yeah. You really got to really save gotta that, that uh, slot there for you. <laughs> that ain't my fault. You guys decided to watch some of my top five movies. Shame <laughs> on you guys. Yeah, this fun. is all our fault. What about you, Michelle? What do you think? Oh, well, I, I said my first impression. But um, <laughs> like I said, less music, more explosion. But what I thought about it at first, and this kind of goes back to, I actually do remember watching this movie at as a kid, I got it mixed up with Treasure Planet a little bit, just right. because Treasure Planet came out the year after Atlantis, and they were kind of similar. But like one was Atlantis, and one was in space, and um, we we owned both on DVD, and I would watch them at home. But I think I liked Atlantis a little bit more for like the whole water aspect, because just the idea of Atlantis, the lost empire, like there being a city underground with like Underwater. these super technology prone what would you call them ancient civilization yeah even though they're like way ahead of our times it's like super cool i think that's what threw me um the first couple minutes is showing you like what happened in b b b b b c (laughs) very long time (laughs) 8800 years ago yeah 8000 years ago i believe i was so confused and i kept being like why is it doing that what is going on oh my god and then i realized like maybe i should just watch it and it'll Uh, all make sense but ask less questions (laughs) what you did (laughs) less questions more explosions (laughs) But, but seriously like the movie starts and you see all of these flying um Fish vehicles. Fish vehicles. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm thinking like, oh, so they fly. Okay, so they must be like really, really ahead of their time. And then you see like these like sentient godlike, I don't know, rock formations. And then you see just just so much going on that I was really confused. Um, But by the end, it ended up clearing it up for me and it made it. It made it. Worthwhile. Watchable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Questions were I liked answered. it a lot. Yeah. And like um like we said, there's a lot there's a lot of characters in this movie. Yeah, there's a, a whole there's a whole team of uh explorers, of explorers slash mercenaries. They're going oh on my a God. trip. <laughs> they're on this uh they're on this squad. Um oh, spoiler alert. They're also mercenaries. Oh hey there yeah, go. guys! Spoiler oh, alert: we're gonna we're gonna spoiler. talk about the ending of the movie. <laughs> this movie came out in two thousand one. Two thousand one. But I I I feel like not tons of people have seen it. No, it, it was kind of a flop, really. Like Atlantis and Treasure Planet both didn't do super good. Yeah. But there, I know a lot of people who dig them. Like I said, because it doesn't necessarily like a musical movie. It's just like an action packed movie. Like I said, it kind of reminds me of like. Avatar, the last airbender type of movie. You know, like along those lines where it's like an action packed adventure. Oh, okay. Avatar the Last Airbender, the movie, is hot garbage. Avatar the Last I Airbender seen it. the TV series. TV Maybe that's series. what I'm thinking of. Fantastic. A plus ten out of ten. Okay, that's what I'm thinking anyway, of. Anyway. Whatever But that's Nickelodeon. TV. Let's not talk about that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but yeah, it, there's a lot of there's so many characters. Um I would say, let's see, Milo Thatch. He's yeah. the main dude. He's yep, a linguist. He speaks Atlantean. He's so let's start like talking about what happened when we were watching the movie. This was really funny. We're watching the movie, 
and the whole first scene happened where I told you I was like, oh my god, what is happening? <laughs> and then you see Milo in his what you think is a classroom, but mm-hmm. it's really ended up being like the boiler room when he was talking to nobody, which is quite hilarious. It was funny. It's <laughs> but, pretty sad. <laughs> but I was like, thank God that it's being vo- voiced by Michael J. Fox because I like him a That's lot. Right. Yeah. And so I was like, that is the redeeming quality of the first ten minutes of this movie. And Michelle's like, who's Michael J. Fox? And she knows who he is. She just couldn't like connect the yeah, face of the name. Yeah, I couldn't put my finger on it. And so Andre and I both at the same time, Back, back to, to the, the Future. future. <laughs> <laughs> That's he, what he looks like. He's Back to the Future. There is no other person. It's ba- He's Back to the Future. And she's like, oh, oh, I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, as soon as you said that, I was like, got it. <laughs> but it was so cute because I think his voice is so um, recognizable, but he did a really good job for me playing the character really well. So he it didn't did, make yes. me think Marty McFly the entire time. Because right. Most of the time I see him, I'm thinking hoverboard or on a freaking DeLorean. Or he did really, really good. Oh, gee, Doc. Really? Oh, oh, man. <laughs> really, really good. I liked it a lot. So, <laughs> like we said, he's a linguist, mm-hmm. which I guess that's why he speaks He speaks so many languages. He focuses on yeah. dead languages. So dead languages like mainly. Latin so, and what are the roots of the languages. Yeah. I have a few fun facts about the Atlantean language. Oh. So, Mark Ockrand, Mark Ockrand created the Atlantean language. He also created the Vulcan and Klingon languages for the Star Trek franchise. Oh, that's very interesting because Leonard Nimoy, who plays Spock in Star Trek, is in this movie. Yes, oh, who is. does he play? He plays the king, uh, Kida's father. Oh, mm-hmm. very interesting. So Star there must Trek be connections. some connections there. So I thought that was really cool. And then also, <laughs> this one is kind of weird. The written Atlantean language. So he has that book and everyone's like, wait, you can read this? And he's like, yeah. I read it uh, very roughly, but he can read it. Mm -hmm. It's meant to be read left to right, drop down a line, and read right to left. Continuing in this cycle, it was done to create a flowing water-like movement reminiscent of the Atlantean culture. If I had to read like that, that was real rough. That's kind of interesting, though. So instead of like going left to right, stopping, going left to right, stopping, you would just continually kind of move back back and forth. forth. It's like a zigzag kind of. Like a wave. I'm going to write a whole book like that. Come at everybody. The next podcast is going to be spoken in Atlantean. <laughs> 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 We're going to have to write everything out yeah. and read it backwards. Ooh. Crazy. And then y'all get to translate it. Have so I thought, that, I thought that was cool. Like only Disney would actually spend time to create a fake language for a movie. You know what I mean? But they can't give us Dr. Vasile backstory. The, uh, and we uh, don't want to yeah. read this friggin' language. <laughs> no, you're right, true. though. That's actually really cool. Yeah, it is. A little attention to details. I liked that. It's very it's true. That's very cool. Okay, I have a fun fact uh, that I just discovered right now. I, w- I went to a website just to look up some um, some money information about how much it made, which honestly isn't that important. But I see on this site that this movie was written by, not entirely, but the story was done by Joss Whedon, who is the director of The Avengers. What? Really? Yeah, Joss Whedon worked on this movie. That's where he got his start? Uh, well, I feel like he had... He had been doing Buffy the Vampire Slayer and stuff like oh. that before, before this. Oh. But uh, but yeah, he was a writer on Atlantis: The Lost Empire. Well, you know, it's interesting because I think that, and I said this multiple times when we were watching it, but I think that you can tell when watching this movie um, that that they either were trying to do like the beginnings of a 3D or something because just yeah. the angles sometimes that you see. And we look at it from our perspective now and we're like, well, this animation is not the best. But at the yeah. time, it actually um, was notable because it had the most CGI than any other Disney movie mm. feature up to that point. Right. So it was pretty like technologically forward. Yeah, yeah. like it, it was notable for that. And it's interesting that the way that they implemented it like I'm sure it looked fantastic at the time, but now it looks very dated. And I was gonna say, to like, to mine eyes, <laughs> this movie, the animation isn't as good as Pocahontas, but the technology made to create this movie is like higher up than Pocahontas. Right. You yeah. know what I mean? So that it's, kind it's of a cl- early, it's a classic CGI case of uh, newer world. isn't always better. Not necessarily. Just like the it's, uh, it's good now, the Star Wars you know. prequels, but I won't go into oh, that God. that particular rant right now. <laughs> George Lucas. Um, <laughs> did you have something you wanted to say, Louise? No? Okay. Let's move on <laughs> to something else. So um, they start this movie with uh, Milo trying to get funding to go explore Atlantis. 
and then he is uh practically kidnapped by this other t- team of people who who mm-hmm. want who want his help in in discovering Atlantis and the the guy who he is end up sent to is named Mr. Whitmore and he's like this weird dude who's doing yoga in his dark uh office I'd be his friend he's cool that dude is cool he he reminded me a lot of like Dumbledore from Harry Potter, just like a like a crazy old man that turns out to be like a secret genius and is helping this young man with glasses on the way to prove his destiny. I like at the beginning how uh, Helga, the um, the blonde in the mm-hmm. in the in the movie, made it seem as if he was kind of like the most evil, meanest right, person. Like, Don't look him in the eyes. Yeah, like make sure whatever you say, you speak in very uh, short phrases, get straight to the point. And as soon as he meets him, he's over there, you know, doing yoga, shaking his hand with his foot. And (laughs) it's like, I think that she was saying that, like when you step back and think about it, I think she was saying that so that he wouldn't get wrapped up in his like phantasmic, like he's so like, you know, marvelous. And so she's like, get to the point. Like that was more her being like, I'm not dealing with all this but craziness I'm tired for any of your stuff. <laughs> Stop doing your yoga. Say yes or no. Only speak when spoken to. Okay. Don't make this worse than it needs to be for me. Interesting. That makes sense. Um maybe we should go through and talk about all these crazy characters. So Helga yeah. is kind of the one who went and kidnapped him for to take him to Mr. Whitmore. She reminds me of like a Calhoun esque from type Wreck character. Ralph. Yeah, from Wreck It Ralph. Yeah. But she's like the worst. Like her name <laughs> is Helga. <laughs> so I mean First of all, Sorry, Helgas. Oh, sorry. <laughs> but Helga I mean, is Helgas. kind of a, it's a name, you know. It is a name. It's a name. So she was interesting, and then her co-worker was this Commander dude. Yeah, Commander, Commander. Tiberius Rourke. Rourke. Uh, that, that's See, a name, too. That's a name, Rourke. too. Yeah. I just so they were kind of working together. I'm I'm just saying, if we did a live action of this, she would most definitely be played by Scarlett Johansson because she's like oh, super cool. Yeah. She totally reminded me of Black Widow. Oh yeah, she's like total Black Widow without the like underlying good girl. <laughs> right. Like yeah. you know, Black Widow is a pain, but she's also like trying to redeem herself. But Helga wasn't. I disagree with you, um, and it's mostly <laughs> the Avengers' fault because the Black Widow we see is the one that is seeking redemption, that has done bad things in her past and is trying to go away from that. So it'd be very hard for me to kind of see um, uh, Johansson in that role. Maybe um, like through maybe like her backstory, like like bo- this happened before the Avengers happened. Um, <laughs> possibly, but... Um, right when she got out of the KGB. Uh, you actually sent a... Uh, what was a fan fiction of who would play them li- uh, live action mm-hmm. to me? Mm-hmm. And I thought the choice of Charlize Theron, I think it's who it was. Mm. I thought that was spot on. Uh, if not her, then I think Nicole Kidman would make a good Helga. Oh, I can see that too. Yeah, she was yeah, awful she in uh, in uh, the Paddington Bear movie. Mm-hmm. She was awful, so I could see that. Meaning... She mean, was mean. Not awful. Like, she was an awful actress. Yes. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so the reason we're kind of talking about and we're comparing all of these characters to live action people is because at the end of this movie, my first comment was, this movie would be so cool as a live action. Because right. the very last scene where they're fighting, uh, and it's a long last scene, but there's just going through this whole battle and all this crazy stuff is happening. Explosion, explosion, boom, explosion, boom, boom. explosion. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, with well, today's yeah. technology, like if that was a live action, I think it would be so cool. It reminded me of like the end of Rogue One. Yeah. yeah, you know how like they're on the beach and there's all like the dome, right? Right, and, and then they're all, all right. Right. That's kind of what it might look like. Yeah, it's interesting. Plus space and like, <laughs> I think I think Disney's like uh, their goal right now is kind of to just go through and take all the super popular movies mm-hmm. and remake them into live action movies. But I think it would be a, a a much more stronger tactic for them to take some of their less popular movies and, and make, make them and make actions? them to live action where they I'd can watch this redo them action. and make them better than they were before. I agree. As opposed I to like Beauty and the Beast which was which was very good, but I mean it was basically just as good as the Yeah. The like we liked version. we liked the original, we liked the new one. Right. Um but I don't think enough people say, Ooh, I really like Atlantis. Um yeah. and th- that might actually give it way more acclaim. Yeah. Originally, because this movie does have quite a bit to offer, mm-hmm. I think that it just didn't get the, um, the you know, it didn't get the um for the attention that yeah. it should mm-hmm. have. Because my, one of my first questions 
once I real at, before I realized that I had half seen it in the movie theater <laughs> was was this a straight to DVD movie? Um, and Andre said no, you know no, it was it, in the theaters, and then I was like, well, hmm, maybe I did see it in the theater. Theatrical. <laughs> but, I mean, based on how much attention it gets, I kind of thought it went straight to right, mm, yeah, VHS, not DVD. <laughs> 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 uh, but I thought it went right to um, the video. Video. Yeah. No, I, I mean, I, I could see, like, why that would happen. Maybe the second movie went straight to video, I'm oh, sure. Oh, yeah. But sure. um, I really liked it. Yeah. I could I see. I, w- I would have watched it in theater. So it would have been cool to see it on the big screen. Yeah, there's a, fu- there's a few of those, like, early 2000s Disney movies that I th- that mm-hmm. definitely, like, straight to DVD, like, potential. But, you know, they got released in theaters, and they're less memorable than the... In the classics, like yeah. is this one, Treasure Planet, Brother Bear kind of fits that for me. I Which uh, makes me want to cry because Brother Bear is the most underrated Disney movie <laughs> ever. Brother Bear does kind of fit that it's for me, so too. Good. I was going to say that. I'll have to watch it again because yeah. I, I, I think I only you saw it. You need to watch it again and cry. Okay. okay. It okay. is very good. So Emily and Luis went through that phase where they were watching Brother Bear on Netflix. And so I was like, okay, I'll watch it. And it was very, very good. Okay. Well, yes. we'll do that. So um, I want to talk like, about. Mm, maybe not. <laughs> And I have a question for you guys. So the expedition team, there's a lot of characters on it. Yes. So I'm going to kind of name them off. And then I want us to discuss, like, who was your favorite out of them? Oh, okay. So um, we'll take out Helga and the commander, just since we already kind of talked about them. But um, there's an engineer named Rocio. Mm-hmm. There was the guy who just liked to blow up stuff. His name was Vinny. Which Emily said his hair looks like a bottle cap, and now that's all I can think of. It's so funny. There was a uh, the I weird feel like, and, and I don't mean to cut you off, but I feel like you kind of have to throw in their ethnicities or like their country of origin, because that at least is how I like pictured them. Like, oh, okay. Was her name? Did you say her name was Rocio? Rocio, yeah, she's funny, the one. I don't think they ever used that name, but whatever. Audrey right. Rocio Ramirez. Audrey, yeah, Audrey. Did Audrey. they call her Audrey? Yeah, I think they called I her Audrey. So. Yeah. Oh, okay. so Audrey is like Latina, and mm-hmm. she's. Like feisty, it's yes. quite yeah. Hilarious. She's very feisty. And then what, Vinny? Vinny, he's Italian. Vinny is like he talks like this a lot. <laughs> I, I love his voice. He likes the, the blow things up. Uh huh. <laughs> and then there's the mole. Oh, and I don't, I don't even know what the he mole. was supposed to be. I he's think just he weird. Was French. French. Yeah, I don't. He's yes. just weird. Um, there was Rare. <laughs> Sweet, who was the doctor. <gasps> Sweet. Sweet. Yeah. I really liked him. I so read. I read that Sweet is actually one of the the first black characters in a Disney movie to have like a prominent role. Well, I'm just going to throw it out there. Michelle thought, you know, Tiana's dad was a hot black man. That's I'm right. just going to throw <laughs> it out there. The sweet was pretty good looking. He was good sweet. looking. And he wasn't, ain't nobody's dad. Okay. And also that. he's a doctor. You know. Yeah, and he's a doctor. I agree with that. <laughs> and then <laughs> cracking Milo's back. <laughs> <laughs> I know. He's a good chiropractor. And then there was Wilhelmina, who was the old lady girl that... Like the operator? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. old lady girl. Oh, man. <laughs> she was funny. She and was then, hilarious. And then there was Cookie, and he was the chef, and he was the old man that... What was that line oh, he are you gave, ready Emily? For this? He was like, uh, Helga was was pulling out all the food they were well, taking like on the expedition. Yeah, yeah and, and Cookie's like, what's this? And Helga's like, uh, that would be lettuce. And Cookie was like, lettuce? Lettuce? And then Helga's like, yeah, it's a vegetable, Cookie. The men need their four basic food groups. And Cookie goes, um, I got your four basic food groups. Beans, bacon, whiskey, and lard. <laughs> Beans, so bacon, whiskey, and lard. <laughs> so funny. I dig it. And that goes back <laughs> to what we lard, were saying there's so many good one-liners like in this movie. That was definitely one of them. Right. This movie had, like, like I said, like a lot of a lot of jokes there's at one point when <laughs> the marge the operator or no what's her, what was her name wilhelmina, wilhelmina the operator <laughs> she's just they're they're in a submarine thousands of feet but new oh but yeah beneath the sea. she's talking to her friend marge on the phone just having a regular conversation While they're like having a battle with like the lobster robot and she's just like yeah he's gonna leave she's, she's like, like something marge, like that if he packed a suitcase he's probably gone forever i don't think he's coming back <laughs> you know what i'll call you back marge <laughs> it's just it's just too much because you're like dude she's supposed to be doing like communications for this expedition and she's over here like having her like tea and crumpets <laughs> and she's always so gossiping. calm and she like at the end of the movie she's like well we're all gonna die yeah <laughs> <laughs> she's smoking Fine. her cigarette the yeah. whole time Fine. like it's no beat. i think i read a i read a fact about that as well like she's one of the last disney characters to smoke a cigarette in a movie you oh. know, they, don't, mm-hmm. they don't really do that anymore so out of all of those expedition crew who's your favorite andre oh um I love Vinny, the the explosion guy. Really? Yeah, he he's he's great, and he's got a 
he's got a very interesting backstory. Like his family, my family, they ran a they ran a flower shop, and then it blew up. I got blown oh, yeah. up one day, and now I just love blowing things up. <laughs> Which is ridiculous. Like, what a good backstory. <laughs> his family's flower shop got exploded, and he was like, it was like a calling. Now I'm just gonna <laughs> explode things. It's fine. I got dynamite. I got a roll flare. I got a couple so grenades. So funny. My favorite of them. It has to be Wilhelmina. I don't know. She's so funny. I think every single thing she said made me cackle like <laughs> out loud during the movie because she's so ridiculous. There was one point where she was like, where they were like, oh, Wilhelmina, you, you didn't bring any pajamas? She's like, I sleep in the nude. <laughs> and, and everyone was like, like, and she sleepwalks. And then they, <laughs> and then they threw um, they threw Milo a pair of like a, yeah, blindfold. like a blindfold eye, eye sleepy things. And they're like, you're going to want this. <laughs> So Wilhelmina is my favorite just because she's so ridiculous. She's I loved there. it. Wilhelmina was played by uh, Mrs. Packard. That's 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 her whole name. That's her whole the whole credit that she has. Oh in, in well, the movie. her full name is says Wilhelmina Bertha Packard. So did they call her Miss Packard in the movie? Oh, well, I guess awkward. Hmm. It was very know. hard to remember all of their names because there was a lot of them. Okay, Emily, who's your favorite? Um, I think it was pretty obvious with Sweet. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean he. He was good looking. He was probably the nicest to Milo up front. And mm-hmm. he was one of the first ones to turn back around once we discovered that they were mercenaries and be like, hey, this is not what we signed up for. Right. Because Rourke, the ca- uh, the captain, the commander. the commander, was getting like like really violent. And yeah. that's where he was like they were they were mercenaries. Yes. Mm-hmm. But they were more about the archaeological find the money than they were about like torturing people or killing them or like yeah, they wiping out an money. entire civilization. Yeah. So once it kind of started going in that direction, he was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Right. And, and I he actually started taking care of the dad, like the, yeah. the king, the king, which was really great. So I was like, haha, yeah, my guy has the redeeming feature, even though he's a, he was very good. And I think one of know, my favorite things for him <laughs> is when he first met Milo and he was like kind of giving him a little exam. And then he had those two giant beakers. And he's like, now fill these up. <laughs> Miles like, Milo's with like, what? what? <laughs> with what? Like, oh that was God. funny. That was fantastic. That was he, great. You could tell he had a good sense of humor. Yeah. Um, he also like was was giving the mole, which was my least favorite character yeah. in this movie. Hey, he was giving the mole a really hard time. He was like, back, back into the cave from once you came. Or <laughs> the cave. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh my gosh. It was like, too I, funny. I, you I sit on know. his dirt. I don't know why mole was a character in this. Yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, we could have just had a regular excavation. Or he could have been one of the like nameless like gas mask people, which if that didn't tell you that there's something was mm-hmm. coming, like oh my god, <laughs> Louis, who is your favorite um, team crew member? member? Um, that's kind of a that's a tough one. I really liked Vinny; he was funny, but then I also kind of liked uh, Molier because he was excellent in playing his role. Yeah, um, he was he was a mole, you know. <laughs> um, he was literally a mole. <laughs> Truth be told, I really liked Cookie as well. Cookie um, was but so if good. I have to choose between the three, I think I'm gonna go with uh, with uh, Vinny because of a uh, um, he was he he had a lot of funny one liners. So yeah, I'm gonna go with Vinny. Mm-hmm. Vinny was very funny. Yeah, I, I want to give a little bit more credit to the to the mole as well. Like he he's what? a very unlikable character. Yes, he but is. but that's very. that's kind of why I like him because he's he's a he's a creep and he doesn't hide it. At all. Oh god. He, <laughs> he lets his He creep wears flag his creep flag. on his sleeves. <laughs> no. You know, it's actually really funny. One of the I feel like it's an underrated moment of the film. Um they're trying to like get someone to go with um Kita, the the main princess. Oh yeah. And, and they're like, Who's gonna go talk to her? And then like really the mole is like words. Me, 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 I will me, do it. I will do it. And they're like, uh no, someone else. Uh no, someone else. And he's like literally creeping around. They're like, like We need somebody who has people skills, like I will do it. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, No, oh you don't please no, no get the mole away. No, you got, sorry. You got dirt skills. Well, you know what's funny about that too is that in the first scene where you see him, um, Milo comes into his bunk right on mm-hmm. the submarine, and he goes to lay down, and like actually maybe I think he did lay down, and yes. the mole freaks out because he has all of his dirt samples in Milo's <laughs> bed, which is first <laughs> like, off separated like, by country of yes. origin yes. or something, and he says something about like not letting it's like, like you can't mix France with uh, Britain or something yes. like that, and it, which it's funny because like 
during the time period, that's actually quite funny. Yes. But it's like... This movie was set in 1914. So you could just see him like, no, they must not mix. No, they must not mix. <laughs> oh, my God. Stop. It was funny. But, you know, the other good thing about this movie is that I feel like so many... So often we talk about how Disney, they do a lot of attention to detail, but then sometimes people don't... Um, things don't happen according to time period. Mm -hmm. Like, things will be out of context yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Um, like... Like, I think Milo says Jiminy Cricket, but Jiminy Cricket wouldn't have been around because that was in the sure. 40s. Whatever, whatever. Right. Mm. But all of the weaponry used in the um, in the movie that the that the regular humans had, like the people who were excavating, mm -hmm. apparently that is all correct to the time period, which oh. is really cool. Atlanteans, obviously not because right. they're... Super space age water people. The Atlanteans had a lot of had a lot of stuff going on, but they it, were very it's cool. interesting because like during towards the end of the movie, they're having like a fight down in the in the cave. They're, they're having like a literal dog fight where Milo and his crew are all on the the fish vehicles. Yes, and then the rest of the excavation crew under the commander, they're like jumping into these like very light looking flying machines that they yes. get shot out of in a like a like a slingshot kind of yes. kind of thing is that real was that a real thing i said the weapon right oh okay. nothing Just about the, the flight vehicle okay yeah that that that, but that seemed a little far-fetched that, that to reminded me. me even though that particularly i don't think was real it reminded me of um the aircraft that was av w available and used in the wars of that time you know what i mean it looked right, like yes. it not so much that it was made out of like paper mache or yeah. something but it, it looked similar to those type of bombers and because i think actually 1914 had planes even been invented yet i'm sure they had yes yeah. mm. well louis Google. says yes and he's the historical that's true guru so we'll true, say true. boom boom <laughs> um, I was looking. I was just looking at some funny quotes, and I guess I do need to give more credit to Vinny because at the end, when like they all turn good, he's all, "We've done a lot of things we're not proud of: robbing graves, eh, plundering tombs, double parking." <laughs> but <laughs> somebody got hurt. <laughs> <laughs> double, parking. double parking. Double parking. Well, he also says something like they get on the fish boats, and um, <laughs> Vinny's like, "Hey, Milo, you got anything more fancy? S more anything, anything more sporty? sporty? <laughs> like a tuna?" <laughs> 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 Because a tuna is more sporty than a hammerhead shark. Like, get it together, oh. Vinny. That's funny. funny. <laughs> I love it. Oh, yeah. Oh, so Pla planes were invented in 1903. All right. We're okay. Good. We're good. <laughs> we just had to make sure. Yeah. Well, I hadn't even made the comment. I was like, how does he not know how to drive a car? But it's because it's 1914. Cars had, like, that, you know. Just barely been invented, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Well, they weren't widespread. So exactly. it's not like. Not like everybody had a car. It was like. Three cars on the road, 45 horses and carriages on the road. Well, you know? and he was in Washington, D.C., and so I'm assuming they may not have needed. Right. You know, he wasn't out here in the in a wow, wow wish. <laughs> so yeah. he didn't, he didn't need <laughs> he his need horse and buggy. I don't know. Yeah. That's true. Look at me knowing everything about history. <laughs> <laughs> I know nothing. So we've talked a lot about um, the, the human characters. We didn't really talk about the Atlanteans at all. Yeah. So Kida, about Kida. is the princess mm -hmm. of... Atlantic City. Of Atlantis, she yeah. is so cool. But she's not considered a Disney princess, which is a little Right. Little it's kind of sad. She's beautiful. She yeah, looks Kita, amazing. Kita's hot. Y'all y'all got, got your Y'all got your crushes on dads and sweet or whatever, but <laughs> Kita She kind of reminded me fine. of Pocahontas a little bit and I mean a lot of the themes in this movie yeah, reminded me of similar. Pocahontas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, there was one moment Emily was like, "She's doing the Crowley Pocahontas thing." <laughs> 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 yes, but I absolutely walk. love Kita. She, yeah. was she was so super cool. cool. Well, awesome. the Atlantean seemed really cool too because they were very um they were they were you could tell that even though they were very advanced for the time period, they mm -hmm. also wanted to keep the culture. Right. Um, just kind of like, again, like Pocahontas, but they wanted to keep what rooted them. And I think that was really cool because you could see it in their lifestyle. Yeah. How they were cultural. And I just thought that was really cool. Yeah. They, 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 they've mm -hmm. been going about their daily lives for 8,000 years or whatever. Which is that's a lot of life. It's a lot of life, and, and they but were still smiling. I would not be smiling after eight thousand years. <laughs> mm -mm. I'm just gonna say, I'd it. be so bored. Oh man, can you imagine having been sucked down into uh, the bottom of the ocean in Atlantis, the Dome City, and trapped with all of your neighbors for the next eight thousand years, Absolutely knowing not. full well that you owe Johnny over there money and you you, you don't have it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh Man, he's been bugging me for 300 years. I've got to get him off my back. <laughs> well, it's funny, too, because at one point in the movie, um, you know, Kida, which we can talk about this funny interaction in a second, but Kida takes Milo underwater, oh. and she'll take him underwater 
like very far to get yeah. a breath and then very far elsewhere to read like ancient writing, uh-huh. right? Because he's mural. the only one who can read it. And um, and I I think I said it or someone else said it and we're like, dude, how did she find this? And then <laughs> Michelle's like, she had a lot of time. <laughs> she had 8,000 right. years. Yeah. She's, she's been swimming. <laughs> she's explored every inch of that whole city. And I get that. She can probably hold her bl- breath a long time. Like, she's an Atlantean. That's probably some kind of superpower. But I was like, I don't know how Milo is not dead. Because Milo, he looks like he has asthma. Like, there's no way <laughs> that dude can hold his breath. She didn't give him a lot of credit. Of, she was she, like, you're what a scholar. Of, yeah, one of her yeah, one yeah. of her quotes is like, "You you you're a scholar, are you not? Judging from your <laughs> diminished physique and large forehead, you're suited <laughs> for nothing else." Like, <laughs> oh, you got a big old brain a, in that head, don't but you, buddy? That's why Sick she's burn. a badass. <laughs> Jake, burn. That's exactly why she's a badass, and I love her. <laughs> Andre, you want to talk about the water scene? Since you think she's gorgeous, the water scene. Oh, there is a there is a <laughs> scene where. Uh, She's telling Milo, like, yes, we have to we have to read these writings uh, on this mural. And Milo goes to like a downed pillar. He's like, oh, yeah, let me let me check this out. And meanwhile, he, he looks over and Kita is just taking off her skirt. And he's like, oh, boy. Oh, wow. What are we? What is what's going on over there? <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah. And I, I had a similar Kita's reaction. Kita's hips don't lie. <laughs> Kita's hips don't lie. <laughs> that was right before they, they went swimming under the yeah. the water. Okay, I know this is a bit early in the uh, podcast, but because uh, due to the, um, so we can be succinct with it all, mm-hmm. um, I want to go ahead and pose my uh, battle for the week. It's battle time. Dun 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 Disney battles. Okay, so for this week, I would like you guys to give me your response to the following battle. All right. Who is more athletic? Pocahontas or Princess Kita? Oh, man. What do you guys think? And we're talking about athletic. Who's more athletic? Go. This is hard because they're very similar people. Well, uh, yeah, they, they are they are pretty similar. They're both. But they uh, got different affinities. That's right. Kita, mm. she's a swimmer. She's a climber. Pocahontas. Is a diver. She's a diver. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> off of a cliff. She drives off cliffs. And an earther. I feel like she's she can earthy. run very fast. She runs. Hmm, she climbs a little bit too. Yeah. She climbs trees and stuff like that. Who is more? Hmm. Kita is also like one of the the main warriors of Atlantis See. as well. She wears that big old warrior mask oh, that they have. My gosh, Those are really cool. So cool. They have like glowing mouths and stuff like that. Which and think about it. The first time that you see Milo interact with an Atlantean, which was he was the first one to do so, mm-hmm. it was her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So she's the one going out, which I mean, through the story you find out that she's probably the one trying to get out so that she sure. can like save the Learn, people. Yeah. Um but sh- that's pretty um She's got some cojones. Yeah. <laughs> if she's going out there and she's like, Louis. let me get all up in the fray. <laughs> like Charlotte. <laughs> yeah, <seriously. laughs> Back into the fray. Back into the fray. Yeah. Uh, I think at one point the king, when he, um, Kita brings the whole expedition crew to to him, he's like, Kita, what's wrong with you? You would have uh, <laughs> murdered any any outsider like this uh, a couple thousand years spot. ago or whatever. A couple thousand years ago, <laughs> you're like losing your touch, yeah, girl. So that makes me think that she's an excellent fighter as well. Mm-hmm. She'd be killing all the, <laughs> <laughs> the people. I think my vote is for Kita simply on the fact that she's, what, 8,800 years old? But she's yeah. probably even older than that because she was like a child 8,800 sure, years she's ago. she's like 8,804. Lord knows. <laughs> if I was working out for 8,800 years, I'd be so strong. I'd be so fit. And that mm. that would just be it. She's been a warrior for that long. Like, she's more right. athletic, I think. Hmm. She's got more tricks up her sleeve. That's a good point. Um, I'm trying to think of... Okay, so Pocahontas, what else can she do? She's, she's, she's running. She's jumping. She's diving. She's... <laughs> Singing. She rows. She rows her she canoe. Sings. She sings. Kita doesn't yeah. sing. That's that's right. She's got the the vocal athleticism. Hey, that is <laughs> athletic, Louise. The non singer in the group is going to try to get all up in me right now. Oh no! No no no! It has nothing to do with that. Look at the genres of the movies. Do this you know was, anything about breath this? Support? Was not, this was not a <laughs> musical. This was not a musical. But you asked about athleticism. Yeah. Th- no offense, but that's not much of athleticism, if you ask me. Mm. Oh. Ooh, we're going to have All a right. fight later. Okay. <laughs> I got eyes on I think fight. I'm going to say, okay, I agree with Luis only because technically 
do princesses even know that they're singing? Aren't they just talking to each other? <laughs> I freaking and it, hope so. And it comes out song. <laughs> like, okay. are they really Have singing? you ever seen the wolf cry of a blue corn moon? Uh, Have you? I, <laughs> I agree, though. I don't think it has to do with singing. It has to do with the other stuff. Yeah. Whatever. The athleticism. Whatever. So, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I was trying to give Pocahontas a couple more points. She <laughs> she, has, uh, she she rows a canoe, so she's got them arms. Yeah, she does. Um, she runs through the, the cornfield, so she's got the them The bears legs. aren't afraid of her, so that makes me think that she's wrestled a bear a couple oh, times. Oh, you think she's fought a bear? <laughs> she uh, did better than Leo in The Revenant. <laughs> <laughs> uh, came out better. Uh, um, but Poca didn't get an Oscar, so. No. Um, <laughs> she's friends with trees. Uh, that's not athletic at all. So uh, yeah, I want to. I, I want to give. I'm trying to help you, but yeah, I, really I want to give Pocahontas a lot, of, a lot of credit because I'm be sure Kida. she's very athletic. But I think Kita. I think yeah. she Kida has, too. She has to three take votes it. for Kita. What's yeah. your but Pocahontas is pretty legit too. She is. What about well, you, Lou? Oh, and here's my um, here's my last point for that because I agree with all three of you. Is that she? She's she is almost a celestial type being. So yeah, she's Pocahontas got like isn't. royal blood. She's royal. She's got some kind of crazy crystal power. Yeah, Atlantean. So if Pocahontas had all that, they would be a real duel. But right now, I think Kita has like the upper hand because she's Atlant because she's actually Atlantean. Yeah, let's go ahead and make this a um, a sweep, and I'm gonna agree with Our all of sweep. you guys and say it is Kita because. First off, she has been around way longer and has lived a longer life than Pocahontas. Mm -hmm. And I didn't mean to be disrespectful <laughs> towards the, you know, uh, singing community. He just doesn't want to get beat up after this, FYI. That's where <laughs> this apology is coming from. Oh, my goodness. No, I'm not afraid of anything. But um, I really just... versus Emily and Louise. Just kidding. Uh, okay. I, it's just, you know, <laughs> out of... Uh, you know, um, chivalry. I do want to go ahead and extend that apology, uh, but I only I, I took singing out of that simply because um, it's a different type of it's movie. a different type of movement. I mean, if it were like show choir, somebody singing while they're jumping around and doing a twirly early, then okay, fine, twirly. we can go ahead and consider twirly that twirly early. He yes. said. I'm however, doing the hand jive in the background, everyone. I'm however, if it's just somebody you know. Standing on the mic in front of a mic, uh, you know that's where I, that's why I had to make that um, separation. So right. again, um, no offense, it is very difficult to do. Um, I am a firm believer that um, any kind of talent is very difficult, no matter no matter what people may think. Louis They're all does difficult. think that cheerleading is a sport, so there you go. I'm moving yes. on. <laughs> We got a sweep for Kita. And that's because Kita's my girl. Also, she's the first. <laughs> she's the Michelle's girl. She's Both. the first Kita's Disney princess to become a queen in the same movie. She's the queen at the end because her father dies. That's true. Frozen they don't Elsa? show. Oh, yeah. No. Uh, well, she was the first. Well, yeah. Okay. In 2001. She came before. <clears throat> oh, the first. The yes. first. Yeah, I mean, just because I saw Frozen first. <laughs> <laughs> we, never, we never had her coronation on screen or anything like that. Mm. But it says that she was the first Disney princess to become a queen. She's, got a, she's got a cooler outfit at the end. So that, that means she's yeah, the queen. Yeah, she does. Now. She's so cool looking. And I was like, that would be a really good Halloween costume, except that I ain't wearing that because it's <laughs> a little bit skimpy. It's <laughs> <laughs> just a little cold in October. I was yeah. going to throw it out her there. Her hair is like goals, too. I know usually it's like, oh, the princess hair is so beautiful. But her hair is just like cool. And she's got like some chopped hair, too. Like yeah. the top layer is chopped and it's like shorter and then the, like the bottom's longer and it's like white. As you, know you can what? tell, I really like Kita. I think Kita is also the first Disney princess to have a face tattoo. She's got uh, <laughs> a she whole got a thing mic. on her. Yeah. Tyson. <laughs> I like how all of their tattoos are blue. Kita too. versus Mike Tyson. Go. No. <laughs> Boom. Oh well. Okay, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Who's more athletic? I love Kita. Kita doesn't bite. There mm. you go. <laughs> also, <laughs> Kita, well, Kita's like a chosen one, too. So can we can we talk about the crystal? Yeah. That it, was where I was kind of getting like, what's happening? So uh, yeah. it's, it's <laughs> the, uh, probably the most confusing concept in the movie is that at the beginning, the, uh, the king was using the the sentient crystal god's power as a war tool and the sentient god crystal didn't agree with that. Yeah, so because they said, like, the crystal has been around for so long, it provides them protection and life. everything like that. And life. life. And That's why they're alive and live and forever. That's why but they're it had evolved <laughs> to, like, have feelings. Right. Like, to be almost 
living. Yeah, it, it gained which is it, insane. It gained consciousness. Yeah, it gained a consciousness. So, and it was like, you're not using me for war. So since it disagreed, it destroyed... Like the quote-unquote gods, that's what they were telling people. But the idea is, is that the crystal destroyed what Atlantis had been using it for. Right. So because they, they no didn't want anyone to get a hold of it. Yes. Right. So they couldn't use it as a vehicle for war. So and that's I, why they're underwater. I think the only reason that Atlantis survived is because Kita's mother sacrificed, sacrificed herself her. to the crystal and kind of yeah. uh, protected the, the city. Well, that's what they said, too. They said, like, in time of when the crystal like feels that it's in a time of distress or duress mm -hmm. that's when it takes like a royal blood sacrifice so it had chosen uh mom. kita's Her mom mother. and then in this movie it chose kita because right. the crystal knew like okay something's gonna happen so i need to sacrifice the king got off easy how come he didn't have to get chosen he just died <laughs> yeah, yeah they're like hmm, hmm you did the problem you were out there like right. waging war but <laughs> you're just gonna chill and then i'm gonna take your wife and your daughter mm, not and chosen then, and then i'm gonna hmm, give your daughter back i don't know <laughs> it's a little confusing yeah, it was so a really cool concept though like i like when they went underwater and it like chose kita and then she, she, came out, cool she was like glowing she was so cool. i wrote I wrote Kita is Jesus in my notes <laughs> twice. I wrote it twice. I wrote it in lowercase yeah, and then I, I wrote it again when she came out of the crystal all blue. I was like, Kita is Jesus. <laughs> she definitely walked on water. Yeah. She walked on water. Well, it's funny that he said that too because not that we're going to go into a big talk about it, but there was so many biblical references. Yeah. That there we were. were. Like, there was. Hmm. Like, it's just you could kind of see almost time period wise. We were trying to figure out like because they said the great flood came. Was that supposed to be like Noah and like the Noah's Ark? Ark yeah. So like or in the <laughs> journal, um, it looked like they were saying the. Oh, yeah. It looked um, like the Bethlehem. Shepherds. Well, they were even calling them shepherds. The shepherds yeah. that right. found Atlantis and it looked like Bethlehem star. Yeah, it looked like the North Star over Bethlehem. I don't know. So we were just, just cool. like, hmm, interesting. I mean, maybe they were doing that on purpose. Or not the beginning maybe they of weren't. the movie, Milo was saying, it says in the Bible, blah, 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 blah. And that's how he figured out it was in Iceland. Oh, yeah. Right. They were talking about Ireland. like the book of Job and how mm. Crazy. instead of being in Ireland, like everyone thought, the shepherd's book was actually in right. Iceland. And like in the book of Job, like the, the big whale monster creature that they, yes. they fight early on that's supposed to be the the yeah. whale I crazy think. yeah which kind of was even right. though it was a mechanical whale lobster. mechanical whale like monster lobster, lobster. I think. Yeah, yeah i don't it was, it was creepy it was creepy I but it. the, the <laughs> crystals nope. power like that whole thing really appeals to me it's very cool mm -hmm. and i like how they wear all of the necklaces that like start um these vehicles um and also the, the those necklaces are really in right now. Like crystals, yeah, the crystals. crystals are in right now. Yeah, so they are. Crystals. I need me a crystal necklace like that. And we were also saying cool. that the the we really symbol, could be them for Halloween. <laughs> we could. The symbol of Atlantia or Atlantis. of Atlantis, the like spiral like that is kind of hidden in different parts throughout the movie. Mm -hmm. But it reminds me of Moana's spiral. It's kind of similar. Similar. Right, in a yeah. Way. They I think that it, it looks more similar because in different parts of Moana, when it gets lit up, that's what it looked lit. Like, like when the like kind of power source. surged it yeah. through it, that's when it looks kind of similar. Well, and they're both like a life source, kind of. Mm -hmm. mm. Very cool. Yeah. There were there were a lot of um, cool, like all the Atlantean stuff was like really cool. Like I loved all the, the creatures that were just down there. Like e even before Everything. they got they got yeah. to the city, they were like going, they were taking wrong directions and seeing like all these weird <laughs> undersea monsters that were living in this cave, I guess. That mm. weren't really underwater, but like right. they had been at some point. Yeah. They just, they're just down there yeah, hanging out. Yeah, creatures were very, very cool. I loved the fireflies, how they all came out and were literally catching things fire on fire. Flies. That was oh, that really was cool. cool. That yeah. was very cool. It, it took, uh, you know, Ray to a whole new level. Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> catching fire on things. So I think um, to wrap up my crystal thoughts, this is at least a little bit easier for me to understand than the Infinity Stone stuff. Because there's just one crystal, and there's lots of Infinity Stones. And so you guys know Infinity right. Stones. She's talking about the Marvel comic universe. Yes. I know yes. that I think on the podcast we've said MCU a couple times, and people are like, oh, what does MCU yeah. mean? You know, we, it means Marvel comic We universe. have mentioned the Marvel movies a lot, and though they are part of Disney, we haven't talked about any of those movies mm -hmm. on, on this podcast. But we, We'll get there. Yeah, watch them, because we're, we're be going to refer Maybe to them Maybe that'll be a theme a one Oh, my God. No, that would be like a whole summer. <laughs> It would, it, take, it would take a long time to get through time. all of them. I don't know if I would listen to all of them. Currently, <laughs> there, are, <laughs> there are 22 uh, MCU well, movies. Well, considering if we pick that as like a month's theme, we would watch four of them. <laughs> so 22 ain't happening, y'all. We, we did that <laughs> We did that over the course of a year. It took, it, it took a year. It ain't happening, y'all. Interesting fact. I read somewhere that if you um, 
go ahead and watch every single MCU movie starting in January, mm -hmm. like one mm -hmm. every week. You will have gone through the entire MCU universe by the time I believe the new Avengers comes out. Oh. Oh. In May. Like from if you like, if you start Infinity January first, mm -hmm. then by May, yep. th that'll that one will. Oh, come that's out. tempting. Wow. We'll see. Well, I mean, that's a that's that might be a good challenge for the listeners if yeah. you guys want to do that. I mean, we might do it, but I can't ever imagine. We can't us, make like, any promises. <laughs> no. We'll just be like, hey, we just watched yeah. Iron Man one. It was good. So hey, well, we just yeah. watched Thor two. It's up. <laughs> All right. Well, like we said, going Try out into the MCU um, <laughs> going into the new year, we kind of want to do like monthly themes for movies and things like that. So if you guys ever pick Marvel, I don't know what we're gonna do with ourselves. Yeah, it'll uh, be fine. I mean, I'll I'll have a grand old time. I'll talk about all those movies, but I won't subject uh, that to the to the rest of you. True, true. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> I was yeah. waiting for the um. <laughs> not, yeah. Not, yeah. Not quite. So yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh my! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what song that was, guys. I just made it up. What? So I would, I think I want um, some listener feedback on this movie too. Let I us hope know you guys watched if it. you guys actually watched it, or right. if it was one of those movies you watched as a kid. Like maybe you actually really liked this underrated Disney movie, or you think it's underrated and yeah. it deserves a little bit more credit. Because well, I, I want, I want to know where the regular audience is mm -hmm. is at with this movie. Because there's a couple of different um, sources, like yeah, like on Rotten Tomatoes, it has a forty nine percent. Which just but seems what a little Google low. Users say? But the Google user said it's like 92% of Google, of Google users, users enjoy like this it. movie. That's and on IMDb. on IMDb, it has a 6.8 out of 10. So it's kind well, of we got mixed all reviews, over guys. the place at the yeah. moment. So people like it, but it's not that great. Like, right. That's what they're trying to say. Yeah. I don't know. That's basically it. Are we, uh, do you think we're, are we ready to do our ratings? Yeah, I think we're ready yeah. to do our yeah. ratings. Lou, you want to go first? Sure. Um, <laughs> I will go ahead and give it a... <laughs> 8.5. 8.5? Really? Are you sure it's not your top five? <laughs> no, if you recall my earlier statement, three words, not top five. Well, he has to know. have nines to be in the top five, Please maybe. explain why 8.5 is your rating for this movie. Yeah. I mean, I'm not, I mean, you go, man. Less songs, more explosions. <laughs> it had a lot of funny Vinny. humor. I really liked it. Uh, Vinny's humor was pretty awesome. Um, all of the... Um, Cruise humor was really good. I like that, and they had a lot I of good chemistry. I kind of um, I that feel for for um, for Milo's story. You know, only being uh, having been raised by his grandfather and seeing his grandfather's legacy, kind of laughed at his entire life and just wanting to fulfill it for not only his grandfather but for himself. That 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 really um, that really kind of um, touched a nerve with me well okay so you're you're gonna make me like cry over milo now so yes Heart that stream. is a good it was a good theme and it um <laughs> i also liked it because i don't know I'm, I'm just fascinated by anything having to do with history so that's right up okay, my alley yeah truth okay what about you andre interesting yeah i, I i've been struggling with this uh since i watched it i'm not sure where i want to place it because on the one hand, I I enjoyed the movie a lot. Like Louis said, it was very funny. Um, I liked the story um, for the most part, except for some of the confusing crystal stuff towards the end. Um, but on the other side, there are some slow moments, and um, the animation is not you know as good as the the rest of the Disney movies we've seen thus far. And um, it's like. <laughs> It, I think, I think honestly that that popularity level of it, like I never think about Atlantis, you know, it never it never comes up in my in my mind's eye. So I think for that reason, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna give it like a, like a seven point five. It's it's good. Okay. It's a good it's movie. <laughs> it's middle of the road. It's not it's not fantastic, but it's good. Better than I thought it was gonna be. Yes. <laughs> yeah, better than I thought it was gonna be. Too. Better than expected. 
Michelle, um, what about you? Even though I was the one hyping it up on the last <laughs> <laughs> You guys got to watch this movie. Yeah. Okay. I think we kind of had gotten it confused with Treasure Planet. Uh, that's my, that yeah. was my yeah. problem. I so. 100% thought we were watching Treasure Planet. <laughs> Just kidding. Not because I was confused about the title. Well, no, I was confused about the titles. In yeah. my mind, I kept thinking Treasure Planet, but we actually had chosen Atlantis, and so I was thinking we were going to watch yeah. the one about space. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll have to do Treasure Planet <laughs> in yeah, the future, that one, that one might be coming soon. It's cool. Yeah. It's cool. Mm-hmm. Oops. Um, <laughs> it might be coming soon, yeah. We might have to do that one. So, Atlantis. Coming from a person who loves ocean stuff, it really appealed to me. Mm-hmm. I loved the whole Atlantean thing. Kida was great. I think Kida and the amazing one-liners kind of made this movie. If those weren't there, maybe it would have fallen a little bit more flat for me. Mm-hmm. But I agree with Andre. I'm going to give it a rating of a 7.5. I think last night I was like, ooh, seven, seven and a half. But now that we're talking about it and like little things I'm like noticing and appreciating a lot more, I'm like kind of getting a little bit more excited about it. I'm like, hey, it's a pretty good movie and Kida needs some more credit. Okay. So 7.5 for me. About you, Em. Hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) Uh She's thinking. She's thinking. Well, I I know what I'm going to give it. I just don't want to be the Debbie Downer of the bunch. Oh, I was going to give it like in the six range. Okay. Um, but I'll give it. I'll give it a a solid seven because when I think about grades, it's a solid C to me. (laughs) So it should be. It should be more of a seven. So I'll give it a seven. But I will say that I like. How do I say this? I like the, like Michelle saying, I like the movie more once we talk about it and we learn more about the backstory, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like b- like behind the scenes, the animators, the creators, all that kind of stuff. But that's not what makes the movie when you watch it. So right. That yeah. really shouldn't be taken to account. Sure. So I kind of still feel like maybe like I'm in the six range, but I'll give it a seven because it it's solid. Mm-hmm. But will I ever go and be like, I'm watching Treasure Planet today? You mean Atlantis? Atlantis. See, I don't even know. No. 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 I will not say I'm going to go watch Atlantis, the lost city empire of the sun. Right. And I don't think I would either. (laughs) And I think this was honestly a really good movie for us to all four watch together. Usually we don't... um, I'll watch it together. Andre and I watch it at home together. Em and Louise watch it at home together. But we all four watched it, and I think that kind of made it more enjoyable, too. Oh, yeah. We, yeah. yeah. We enjoy stuff. We had some We fun. can commentary it up. But I will say that I'm still going to say Kida needs some more credit. Hashtag justice for Kida. She <laughs> should be a Disney <laughs> princess. She's so cool. She is very cool. I agree with that. Um, you guys forgot. It wasn't us four watched it together. It was us five. Our guest star, our beautiful baby Addie, Your watched baby. it with us too. <laughs> That's right. And I'm gonna, I'm she gonna stayed say up all the way up until did. about 8.30, 8.40 and watched the whole thing with she us. She liked it. Yeah. And just like a champ of the podcast, she has slept through this entire episode. Yeah. Thank you, child. She's obviously Yeah, no, we were Louise's a little bit worried offspring. about that, but <laughs> Addie knows what's up. She's like, you guys get your podcast on. I'm going to take a nippy nap. Yeah. She's been nippy <laughs> take a nippy nap. <laughs> take a she's been very good. Din din. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Nobody right. will All understand right. that because that's an Emily and Louise oh, inside okay. joke. That's fine. So well, if you want to know what that joke means, ask him, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Be <laughs> friends with <laughs> so Emily and Louise. If you want to know what that means, go ahead as, and shoot us an email or a comment, and we will go ahead and mention it on the next episode. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> din din. There you go. Please don't um, ask. <laughs> so you Please do oh not ask. <laughs> usually we're at the point in the podcast where we announce the next movie. That's right. Um, unfortunately, we can't announce the next movie right now because we did the thing again where we recorded two episodes in one weekend because Andre and I will be in Disneyland December 9th. So if you're there, hit us up one time. Yeah, yeah so but you should know because I'll probably post about it before this comes know. out. Right? And what, yes, what's in the lead know. right now? So right now, <laughs> right now what's <laughs> happening during, during the time of this recording is voting is still happening for our mm-hmm. Christmas themed episode like in real time real time it's happening but people are voting right the votes are rolling in (laughs) here uh so we don't know exactly which movie is coming next but you but you'll know because you voted and if you voted and you told all your friends to vote then your movie has been chosen the Santa Claus. Um, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, first off, it's not I'll Be Home for Christmas. It's definitely the Muppets. It's gonna be the Muppets. So we <laughs> we still don't know, but we will know, um, and you'll know because you're following us on Instagram, which is at the Walt Vault Pod. 
You're also following us on Twitter and Facebook at the Wall Pod. Are we tweeting? Yeah, people are people totally tweeting. No, no, no. No. Are we tweeting? Yes, we are tweeting. Oh, what are we tweeting? Tweet, tweet. Uh, I, have it, I have it set up so that everything <laughs> tweet, that we post tweet. on Instagram just gets tweeted tweet, automatically. Tweet. Oh, cool. Yeah, so. Tweet, tweet. Tweet, tweet. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, follow us there. Uh, you know, subscribe to us on iTunes and Google Play and Stitcher and TuneIn and all the other places I set this thing up. Um Leave us a review. That would be very nice. Yeah, fellow Walt Valters. Yes, leave us a review. because when you leave us a review, it pushes ourselves up in the iTunes rankings, and more people can see us, and more people will listen. And uh, you know, that's that's our goal is to be uh, worldwide, <laughs> worldwide Walt Valters. <laughs> worldwide. Walt so tell your friends, um, tell worldwide, your mother, tell we your went father. From like last week, we were talking about like. We would do this if nobody listened to like <laughs> this week and went like, you know what? We're trying to worldwide. take over World. the world. Why? Worldwide. Wolf Wall, worldwide. <laughs> oh my goodness. So I'm yeah. just gonna turn into Mr. Worldwide right now. <laughs> Mr. Worldwide. Uh so you guys <laughs> <laughs> make sure you're doing all that. Give us a, a review, a rating, uh, all that fun stuff to let us know that you love us. And keep commenting and, and send us emails and all that good stuff. Yep, we love you guys. Love you so much, you guys. That's been it for, <laughs> for episode seven. Uh, the vault is now closed. <laughs>